What? Oh, yeah, okay. Hi, everybody. It's um, Christmas Day 2017, which is to say for everybody that doesn't understand that calendar, it is the 25th of December. Once again, 2017. Oh, my goodness. Did you get over Christmas? Fucking hell. It's always a chore. I don't know why. But okay, I love the time of year. You know, and I... I watch all the movies on the TV. I was goddamn weeping watching Mary Poppins today. That was fucking something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, anyway, I've got a rant. I've got a rant. First of all, a rant. And let me try to be um, delicate with the words that I choose. Anyway, I had a, an experience on the 22nd of uh, this month. Now, my old daddy, he's about 90, well, he is 90 years old almost, uh, and so on and so forth. And he's living in this um, protected, <laughs> protected, uh, environment here in Denmark where I live, if you didn't know. And like, um, I'm not going to name, you know, the exact address, of course, for obvious reasons. But uh, I'm in a suburb of Copenhagen. I mean, it's all, they've got, I've explained the five finger plan to you, you know, the five finger plan. Well, the five-finger plan that this is Copenhagen, this is the bay and the harbor and all that. Oh, by the way, this is about Christiania. That's Christiania there. But anyway, uh, they've got the, 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 the train lines. This one is the one that goes to Kerr, and this one is the one that goes to Roskilde and so on. And this one is the one that goes somewhere else, Gentoft and uh, Helsinger up here somewhere. But that's the day, that's the coconut the, called the five finger plan. And between the fingers are green areas that, uh, well, I've already done a couple of videos about them, but uh, I'll try to cut it all together. But okay, this is my uh, Christmas day rant. Now being an old man and living in, uh, protected environment and like uh, they've got like you know home uh, people that, you know like nurses and stuff like that no but you know people that uh, check in on the elderly they do that here in this country you know which is a good thing and um, but anyway when somebody that is in that line of work I mean caregivers, professional caregivers, you know. When they are no longer trustworthy, I mean, it, it just shifts the whole, the whole fucking deal, you know. I mean, Christ almighty. Well, anyway, on the 22nd of December this year, I came over to my old man's place, and he's living in an elderly home and stuff like that, and that's cool. And my brother is there, and that's really cool, you know. And he's got his wonderful little dog with him, and that's really cool, you know. Hey, little dog, and it's a real smart dog. I, you know, I'm honest to goodness. These, um, what do they call them? You know, sort of sheep dogs, the one you whistle and they run after, and they gather the sheep out there in the field. They've got them in Scotland and Ireland. And, all kinds of places where they have sheep. <laughs> okay, okay, let me get back on track here. So anyway, there's my brother, and uh, there's the little dog, and there's the old man. And then they, it's the season to be jolly, eh? It's the season to be jolly. And, of course, we were all quite jolly. 
Anyway, so uh, underneath the place, there is a supermarket down there. Uh, my brother jumps down, to, or, you know, pots down, takes the elevator down. It's in a, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> and he leaves the dog with me and daddy, and that's cool. You know. So he's out of the house. He's out of the living room. You know. And then about a couple of minutes later, suddenly... This guy walks in. Okay, I know it's a protected environment, like you know. I mean, you expect, you know, they're they're gonna be wearing a white, uh, you know, something like that, and they will definitely have uh, a, an identification patch pinned to their shirt, kind of thing, you know. And I've seen them before, and they're all wonderful people. I'm telling you, they're wonderful fucking people. But anyway, this guy, somehow or another, I mean, well, he's got the key. They've got a master key, all of these people. And they're the home help. But, you know, you can expect. Anyway, this guy walks in on my dad. And at first I laugh and I say, Jesus Christ, are you supposed to be a fucking, you know, care professional? And he's got a sheaf of papers in his arm. Makes him look a little bit official. But the guy is officious, arrogant, authoritarian bullshit. And I question him upon that. And we get into a verbal battle here, you know. It's just, well, it developed into a fucking screaming match. But the thing is, for the first part, I mean, social skills... Don't you knock before you come in, you know? And I'm thinking, fuck me, what the hell is going on here? And I started, and this guy pulls out his fucking telephone and informs me that I'm going to phone the police. I'm trying to perform a function here. I'm going to phone the police. I told him, go right ahead. Phone the goddamn cops, wait out in the in the hall, and in five minutes my brother is gonna be here, and he's with the fucking police. If you want to talk to a police officer, you can talk to him. I never saw anybody get down the elevator that quick. But here comes the funny part. Here comes the funny part. The dog went with him down the elevator. Looking for, you know, my brother and stuff like that. <laughs> and I thought, God damn it, the asshole just kidnapped the dog, you know. But two minutes later, the elevator came back up. And it was him with a bunch of other people using the elevator, of course. And, you know, I let the dog uh, and the elevator went on its merry way. I mean, this was all very confusing. Had I had my wits about me, I would have photographed him, you know, and otherwise complained to the commune, to the community, to the, the county or whatever, I mean, about this. And this is not acceptable behavior in professional caregivers. So I was pretty pissed off about that. Anyway, next Christmas, I'm giving my daddy a gun. Ha! Fuck. I mean, the old man had never seen the asshole before, you know. So uh, that's a complaint. I haven't uh, lodged it with the police or with the other uh, communal authorities here because when my brother did come back up, he gave me a shaving down because, hey, look, you're pissed out of your skull and, uh, you know, you probably didn't, you know, so caused me to doubt myself, you know, at that point, you know, because it could have been, but this guy had nothing to do, he should be in groceries or something like that, because I wouldn't fucking treat a potato like that, you know, fuck me, anyway, that's that said, that was my Christmas rant, okay, uh, here comes the fun stuff, I gotta show you guys, It's what I gave myself for Christmas. 
arguably one of the easiest instruments at all to play, and I like to be inclusive, and I like to jam with people. And, oh, and by the way, we're looking for a violinist that doesn't mind having a couple of beers on a Friday night and singing along with some good friends and shit like that. But anyway, check this out. I got this from um, a mail order company called, I suppose it was Gear for Music, you know. And I've been looking for one of these for a while. It's an auto harp. I reckon I'm probably going to die soon, so I might as well start practicing the harp. <laughs> Because I know I'm going to heaven. I had a friend named Ramblin' Bob. He used to steal, gather and rob. Gamble and rob. He thought he was the coolest guy in town. Well, we got to drinking my Sunday. Didn't get to work on Monday. We checked out every cabaret in town. He's in the jailhouse now. He's in the jailhouse now. I told him once or twice. Stop shooting poo and shitting dice. He's in the jailhouse now. Oh, little lady. Oh, little lady. Oh, little lady. Oh, little lady. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, I want to watch TV again. Are you there? Are you there? Okay, see you guys later.